Good morning, Freshman English. Today we're going to be going over your course syllabus for Pre-AP English 9. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is right here, which is my email address. This is how you're going to get a hold of me all throughout the year. It's ammorgenstern at seatonhigh.org. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick reminder. You will be filling out a worksheet after you watch this video to make sure that you understood and know everything that's on the syllabus. Also, if you have any questions throughout this video, there will be a little comment section that should be right here, show up right here underneath the assignment where you can add comments with questions. This screen looks a little different because this is my screen and I haven't submitted the assignment yet and this is the teacher's view. Okay, so questions throughout the video, comment right there. All right, let's get started. So I want to start with the course description. Uh, really what we're going to be focusing on in Pre-AP English is building your study skills, your work ethic, and the exposure to literature. We're going to be reading a lot of different texts. We're going to be reading novels, uh, play, short stories, and poetry. Um, and in addition to reading, you'll be doing three major writing assignments for me um, and little writing assignments throughout the year. Uh, like any course, we're not just going to focus on reading and writing, but we're also going to be building study skills, time management, um, how to give presentations, and how to really make ourselves successful students. Uh, office hours for me this year, I'm available both before school and after school. Um, before school is usually a little better um, because there's not a lot of students around and I usually am not pulled into meetings in the morning. Um, you can make those by appointment um, and I'm also usually just in my classroom if you need me. All right, course texts. So here we have a list of all the texts that we are going to be reading throughout the year. Um, this is not a full list or complete list. Um, we may add or take away from it. Um, what I want to focus on is these three texts right here, which are, which are our major texts we'll be reading throughout this course. We're going to be starting with Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Um, we will be reading the Odyssey by Homer um, right after that and finishing the Odyssey um, around Christmas break. Um, we're going to take a break from reading novels uh, at the beginning of the second semester and do a fun creative writing unit where we'll be reading short stories and poetry and writing our own stuff. It's going to be really awesome. We'll be finishing out the year with Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Let's move right along to assessments and grading. Here's a list of all of the assignments that you can expect throughout the year. Going through them real quickly, uh, process papers are where you'll have an opportunity to workshop your writing in class. So that's where you'll peer edit and we'll focus on specific writing skills for those essays. Um, In-class essays, um, those can be quiz form and they can also be pre-prepared, um, but we will definitely have one of those at least once each unit. Uh, short response questions or SRQs, this is going to be our major writing for this year. Uh, you will do quite a few per unit um, and it just really hones in on some of the discussion questions that we come up with in class. Uh, small and large group discussions, um, like any English class, um, we really focus on discussions as a means for learning. Presentations, this is going to be really fun. With the Odyssey, you're going to be spending about two weeks learning about how to be successful while presenting and how to create a successful presentation. Daily journals. Every day you'll be expected to have your journal out at the beginning of class, and this is how we'll start English class. Uh, the topics can be about the reading you had from the night before, preparing you for a quiz, or engaging you in a concept that we're about to learn. Reading journals, in addition to annotating and reading, you'll be asked to keep a reading journal uh, with specific questions from me and also questions or comments you have while reading. Uh, reading quizzes, so obviously this is an English class, your homework is going to be daily and you'll either have reading or writing homework. If you do have reading homework, you can expect a reading quiz after or the day, the next day in class. 
Uh, we'll skip poetry responses for now. We don't need to worry about those quite yet. Um, and then IRPs we'll talk about a little bit later, but those are independent reading projects, and you will be hearing about those throughout all four years of your career here at Seton Catholic in your English classes. Here's a quick breakdown of the grades for this year in English 9. So your assessments is 20%. That's daily homework and daily assignments. We're going to do planner checks at the beginning of the semester, and that will go in this assessments 20%. Uh, participation is a pretty big part of our English class with those discussions, either small or large grouped, um, and also student engagement. So you don't necessarily need to be the student who always raises their hand and has a comment um, every single class, but as long as this is really important, as long as you're taking notes um, or responding to your classmates, that's how you can earn those participation points. A writing is 20%. You can earn that 20% through journals, short response questions, or SRQs. And then we have our three major writing components of this class. You'll be writing a research essay, a narrative essay, and an analysis essay uh, throughout this course. Assessments is 40%. This is the biggest chunk of your grade. This is made up of IRPs, major projects, presentations, unit tests, and quizzes. Uh, your final exam will be 10%, and that'll be at the end of each semester. Moving right along to our late work policy. Uh, this course is going to be a little different with your late work policy because the English department has one consistent policy throughout all teachers. So Mrs. Cleland, Mrs. Chase, our student teacher Mr. Anderson, and myself all have the same policy. Your assignments that are one day late can receive up to 80% credit. So that is the maximum amount that you can receive is 80% if your assignment is one day late. Assignments that are two days late, whoop, assignments that are two days late will receive up to 60% credit. So if your assignment is two days late, the maximum of score that you can get on the assignment is 60%. I know that percent seems a little scary. I know that is an F in the grade book. However, 60% is still a lot better than having 0% in the grade book. That'll help out your grade quite a bit, even if it is uh, only 60% maximum score. Uh, if you turn in an assignment that is three or more days late, you will receive zero credit. Okay, It's very important that we follow this late work policy and that you have your assignments in on time. Uh, specific to this class, uh, what I consider to be a late assignment, uh, if your assignment is not complete, if your assignment is not formatted properly, in, in English class you use uh, MLA format, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, or if it's not ready to go and ready to submit at the beginning of class, I consider that late. Okay, uh, Ready to go meaning that your assignment is stapled, your assignment has your name on it, and it is printed and ready to go when I ask for you to turn in your assignment. Um, those are the things that I require for you to get full credit and not receive late credit. All right, let's move on to our absence policy. This class uh, has three scenarios for absence policies um, and three different procedures you need to do uh, depending on your absence, okay? The first of the three scenarios is your pre-excused absence. This is where uh, you are going on an extended college visit or you have a family vacation, um, something that you've planned ahead of time, or like a dentist appointment. Uh, if you have a pre-excused absence, you need to meet with your teacher before you are absent to get any material that you are going to miss during class. It is the student's responsibility to get any material that they have missed during class. That's the first scenario. All right, the second scenario is your absence due to illness or emergencies, okay? This is where you're sick for a day or you have a family emergency that takes you out of town, okay? Things that you cannot plan. The absence policy for this scenario is that you will have one day for every day missed to make up your assignment. So I have a quick example for you. Uh, say you are sick and you miss Monday. All right, and then you're back in school on Tuesday. Your assignments for Monday that you missed are all due Wednesday. 
Now it's really important that you email your teacher prior to coming back to school. So it'll take five minutes to email your teacher in the morning when you know that you're not coming to school because you're sick, okay? Um, this is really important so that way I can email you all your assignments that you missed on Monday rather than giving you both Monday and Tuesday's homework that'll be due on Wednesday, okay? All right, so the third scenario is if you're absent for a test or if you're absent for a project or assignment with an extended due date, okay? If you're absent for a test, you're expected to make it up the day you return, okay? So if you're sick Monday and there's a test on Monday, you're going to take it on Tuesday as soon as you are back, okay? Uh, for projects and assessments with extended due dates. So this is things like extended writing projects, uh, big writing projects, or IRPs. Uh, this is due regardless if the student is absent, okay? Uh, this, be, this is the reason why we do this is because you've had this due date for a long period of time and need to plan accordingly. If you are absent when these major projects are due, uh, there's a few things you can do. You can email the assignment to me, okay? When you send that sick email, hi, Ms. Morgan Stern, I'm sick, I can't make it in, but here's my IRP uh, attached to this email, all right? That's one thing you can do. Uh, you can send it with a friend. Say you carpool with a friend. Uh, you can print it off and have them turn it in for you, okay? Uh, or you can make prior arrangements with your teacher. So say you come to me and you say, oh, I have a uh, college visit when the IRP is due. What we'll then do is we'll come up with a plan to make sure that you have that assignment in on time. Uh, the prior arrangements will be made on a case-by-case -case basis, so not everybody will have the same um, requirements uh, for each assignment, okay? If you're unable to do any of these things in the absence policy, assignments will result in lost credit. So we don't want that. So make sure you pay attention when you're absent to those three different scenarios. All right, let's talk tardies. Uh, in this class, you're expected to be in your seat with your material out before the bell rings. So material for this class is going to be making sure your iPad's out, making sure your journal is out for your daily journal, uh, any homework that is due. Those are the things that you will need to have out, especially any texts that we are reading. So we'll start with Lord of the Flies. You'll be expected to have that every day in class to earn participation points. Okay. Um, you need to have all this ready before the bell finishes ringing. Um, if you're not in your seat or if you're not prepared to start class, you are considered tardy. All right. Uh, in this class, you are going to receive three warning tardies. Okay. So you have three times to be tardy. On your fourth tardy, you will serve a after school detention that begins at 3:30 p.m. Okay, you're expected to serve your detention on the same day as the offense. Um, and if you miss a detention, you will have to serve that detention plus one more. All right, that's tardies. Technology. So technology has changed a lot at Seton this year um, with iPads. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a learning curve with the rules and what is going to be considered acceptable behavior and unacceptable behavior. But there are some things that we can kind of uh, stamp out right away, all right? Uh, let's start off with the basics. No personal devices at any time, okay? No smartwatches, cell phones, laptops, headphones, etc., okay? That is not to be worn in class or have out in class. Uh, students are only to have their iPads out when specifically instructed. Our texts are going to be on the iPad, so you'll be using them every day. Your iPad must be charged and ready to use for class. If you don't have your iPod, or, sorry, if you don't have your iPad ready to use, uh, you'll lose participation point. And if you are a habitual offender, so say you, you consistently don't have your iPad ready to go, uh, you will have additional consequences of detention. 
your iPad your iPad is a privilege as with all other technology um, and will be removed if misused. Use, use your best judgment with technology, all right? Um, we use technology for learning, um, not for going on uh, Facebook and YouTube and those things, okay? Um, academic integrity. You guys know a little bit about this already from the online school week, but just to review it, um, it is a serious crime to plagiarize. Plagiarizing is where you take somebody else's work and you uh, put it as your own, okay? Uh, these, this is a very serious offense and you will be punished based on a case-to-case -case basis um, and receive zero credit for any assignment that is plagiarized, okay? Um, to avoid uh, plagiarism, that's why we use turnitin.com, okay? We have already set up our class code and you are ready to go with that. All right, moving to class expectations. These are uh, just for my class, however, um, they are, and when put in good practice, uh, they are good to be used throughout all of your other courses, okay? Uh, you are expected to uphold these expectations and responsibilities. Obviously, I can't put every expectation on the syllabus, but here are some of the major expectations I have for you in my class. You need to respect the class, respect the teacher, respect your classmates, your building, and yourself, okay? Especially the building. This is a brand new building, okay? Uh, we're going to have pretty strict rules about where you can eat and um, how we treat our brand new building, okay? Uh, students need to be prepared for every class. We talked about this in the tardy policy, but you need to have all the necessary materials, okay? You need to have your pen out. If you're going to write a journal, you need to have your iPad loaded and ready to go if we're going to have a reading quiz, um, those things, okay? Uh, you need to be ready to go at the bell, okay? That's kind of more of an extension of this last bullet point with all the utensils and things you need, okay? Uh, your assignments need to be ready to turn in at the beginning of class. If there is homework that is due, I'll be asking you to do it uh, before you do your journal, journal or while you were working on your daily journal, okay? Uh, in my class, there is, and this goes for all classrooms at our new school, there is going to be no food, including gum or drinks other than water, uh, in all of the classrooms, okay? Uh, if you want to eat a snack during passing, you can eat that in the hallway or the commons, uh, but there won't be any food in class, okay? Uh, note taking, okay? This is really important in English class. Uh, if I write it on the board, if it is on a PowerPoint, or if I repeat it, you should write it down, okay? We're going to be working on building those note-taking skills uh, in the first couple weeks of school, uh, but just something to, that's a really good rule of thumb for you to use while you're taking notes in any class. Uh, restrooms, all right. Restrooms are to be used during breaks and only in emergency situations. The last 10 minutes of class and during lectures, you may not use the restroom. Uh, lectures are constitute or constitute as uh, me being up uh, at in the front of the class with a PowerPoint out or writing on the board. Okay, um, some time that uh, might be a good time for you to use the restroom is during group work or during your own personal work after I am done teaching, okay? Uh, another thing to add is that if you do leave my room to go to the bathroom, you will be asked to leave your cell phone in the classroom, okay? All right, slant. We will go over that a little bit later, um, but essentially that is what is expected of you as a student um, from body language, okay? Uh, and then work time is a privilege, so you will be getting work time in class uh, to do um, some homework, uh, to get ahead, to write in your planners, all right? Those, uh, that is taking my, uh, time out of my day for you, um, and so it is a privilege, um, and if people are not using it properly, it will be taken away. Okay, homework passes. So this is something that's unique to freshman English. All right, uh, you're going to be receiving uh, two homework passes per semester, so four total, okay? Uh, 
Uh, this pass gives you an extra day to complete assignment for full credit. So normally our late work policy is that if it's one day late, you can receive up to 80% credit. Okay, uh, these passes, which you'll have two per semester to use, you can get full credit um, and turn it in one day late, all right? Uh, there's some expectations or requirements uh, that you need to follow um, in order to make these homework passes valid, okay? You need to turn in your homework pass in place of the assignment with your name, date, class, assignment title, and assignment due date, okay? So that's something that you'll fill out when everybody else is turning in their assignment. You'll be filling out your homework pass to turn in with all of those assignments, okay? Um, the second thing is that, you're, is that you must turn in your assignment the following school day. So the homework pass gives you one extra day. These homework passes are really meant for uh, the students who maybe you have four tests and a basketball game uh, all in one night and there's just absolutely no way that you can do uh, Miss Morgenstern's English homework and it'll give you one extra day, okay? Um, because life happens and it, sometimes we get overwhelmed, all right? And so you have two of those per semester. Uh, you cannot redeem your passes for IRPs, tests, or major writing assignments. So those are like those extended due dates that we talked about in the absence policy. Um, and then if you have your homework passes at the end of the semester, uh, you'll be receiving extra credit points for those that you have not redeemed, okay? So really important to hold on to those homework passes, um, an opportunity for you to have uh, a little breather with the uh, a late work policy. We already talked about journals, um, but those will be daily and at the be very beginning of class every day. It's how we will start uh, English class, all right? Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but planner checks. So for the first quarter, what we'll be doing is you will be writing your homework down um, on Monday for the entire week. I'll have a board up that you will have and you'll write down Monday through Friday's homework for that week. What you'll be expected to do is go home that Monday night and get a guardian or parent's signature on that planner. And then you will get uh, completion grade points for having that planner signed and completed on the Tuesday we're back in class, all right? Um, this will only be for the first quarter and then afterwards you will be able to do whatever type of organization and writing in your homework you would like. Um, this is, however, um, something that can return if you accumulate a lot of missing assignments. Um, the, and I will ask you to return to planner checks so that way we keep you on board and get those missing assignments back on track. Okay. Um, I had a lot of students last year who just continued to do planner checks throughout the year. Um, it really helped them organize and ke kept them honest, but I only require it for the first quarter. All right, IRPs, independent reading projects. All right, uh, if you want to read this on your own time, this is attached to our Google Classroom, but essentially IRPs are where you have a text that you choose to read for fun um, outside of class. So this is in addition to the reading that we have in class and you're going to be expected to finish that novel um, for the semester, okay? Um, with that novel or text you will have a um, project to go along with that reading, all right? Uh, the purpose Excuse me, the purpose of this IRP is to develop, develop time management skills. So your very first IRP, remember you're only doing two this semester, or sorry, excuse me, two throughout the whole year, but your first IRP is a book talk and it is due January 9th, 2016. You'll get more detailed information about that when we meet in class on Monday the 26th. All right, and the last thing I just want to show you guys real quick is in my class, I have a course outline. So this outlines all of your major projects and when our units are beginning and ending. So this is something to maybe just take a look at um, when you're writing through your planner to make sure that you have all of those major dates written on your calendar. Okay, so like for example, our Lord of the Flies exam is October 21st. That might be a good thing to write done on your calendar. Also, uh, for the first semester, finals week is January 24th 
through 27th. And see right here, we have our IRP due date right there, okay? This is just a handy little thing for you um, to keep track of those due dates, okay? All right, thanks so much. If you have any questions, like I said, please comment on the Google Classroom. Um, and now it is time for you to fill out your worksheet uh, to turn in for credit. Thanks, have a great day.